Let's dive deep into the world of water and explore a question that often leaves people puzzled. What's the difference between the sea and the ocean? Find out in today's episode of That's Fascinating. You see, the terms sea and ocean are often used interchangeably, but the two have some key differences. We'll unravel those differences today and also look at all the other types of bodies of water on our incredible planet. Humans definitely like distinct labels for everything and have gone to town on this one. But first, let's start by clarifying the difference between a sea and an ocean. Water, water everywhere, so let's all have a drink. Well, it certainly is in a lot of places. In fact, water covers a whopping 71% of the Earth's surface. And oceans count for a lot of that as they are the largest bodies of water on Earth, and we have five of them. Well, kind of. Historically, and mutually agreed and recognized, are the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, and Arctic Ocean. The fifth one is the newest ocean recognized by an increasing number of countries, which is the Southern Ocean. Also known to some as the Antarctic Ocean, which encircles Antarctica. Oceans are vast, incredibly deep, and they stretch across the globe. The Pacific Ocean is the largest and covers basically one half of the entire planet. Seas, on the other hand, are like the ocean's smaller siblings. They are partially enclosed by land and can be found along coastlines. Seas are also generally shallower and have varying levels of salinity due to factors like freshwater inflow from rivers and local climate conditions, whereas oceans have a consistently high salinity level of about 3.5%. Seas are also a lot more numerous than oceans, with around 50 to 70 depending on how they're classified and who you ask, including the Mediterranean Sea, Caribbean Sea, Red Sea, Black Sea, Dead Sea and Caspian Sea, to name a few. There is no exact number of seas, as there is no universally agreed way of classifying them, and politics plays a role in that too, so distinctions are often blurred between seas, gulfs, bays or straits for example. So what's a gulf or a bay? How many other types of water bodies are there on this Earth and what distinguishes them? Let's explore. And in no particular order. Rivers and lakes. These are freshwater bodies, unlike the saltwater seas and oceans. Rivers flow, often originating in mountains, and eventually they pour into lakes or oceans. Lakes are like natural reservoirs holding fresh water in their basins, streams and creeks. These are smaller flowing bodies of fresh water that often feed into larger rivers. Ponds, small bodies of standing fresh water that are usually smaller than lakes. Reservoirs, artificial lakes created by damming rivers. They are often used for water supply, irrigation and hydroelectric power generation. Estuaries, coastal areas where rivers meet the sea. They are often characterized by brackish water, a mix of salt water and fresh water, and are important habitats for various species. Lagoons, shallow bodies of water separated from the open sea by barriers like sandbars or reefs. Bays and gulfs, inlets of the sea that are partially surrounded by land, with bays typically being smaller than gulfs. Straits, narrow passages of water that connect two larger bodies of water. Fjords, steep glacially carved inlets with high cliffs usually found in areas with past or present glaciation. Wetlands, areas where water covers the soil, including marshes, swamps, and bogs. They are vital for biodiversity and water filtration. Canyons and gorges, deep narrow valleys often carved by rivers over geological time. Waterfalls, places where water flows over a vertical drop, often found in rivers, glaciers, and ice caps large masses of ice and snow that can move over land, shaping the landscape. Hot springs and geysers, heated groundwater that emerges at the surface, often associated with volcanic activity. And finally, aquifers, underground layers of water-bearing rock that supply groundwater. There are many more, lesser-known bodies of water, such as sounds, washes, tarns and shoals, to name a few. So, why is understanding these distinctions important? Well, it helps us appreciate the incredible diversity of our planet's bodies of water and their unique roles in supporting life and shaping our world. From the immense depths of the oceans to the serene beauty of lakes, each type of water body has its own story to tell. Our Earth is a water wonderland, and learning about it brings us closer to understanding the delicate balance of our environment 
and the absolute necessity of water for life to exist. Now that's fascinating. Oh 